I'm Paul Bennett at Shoestring Shipyard here in Millbridge, Maine. We're located along Maine's Bowl Coast, not very far from the U.S. Canadian border. The hull of my 18-foot sailboat is now complete. It just has to be rolled over right side up uh, off the strong back. But it's going to need some spars. It needs a mast and a boom, and that's what the Dona boat is for. And uh, if you watched my videos earlier, you saw that Dona boat. But now I have to refurbish the mast and the boom and get it ready to plant on my new 18-foot boat. Hey, everyone. It's uh, Monday, March 8th. 2021 and uh, it's still winter here in down east Maine and there's still a lot of snow and ice around it's a few degrees above freezing but it feels pretty good because there right now there's no wind and the sun is out and it's in the afternoon where the sun is down on me I'm feeling it without the wind and I can work out here what I'm going to do now is I'm beginning to take all the hardware and all the rigging off the mast and the boom and the whisker pole. I want to completely remove all that and then when the weather turns warmer I'm going to take some aircraft stripper. Aircraft stripper is typically used removing paint and epoxies from aircraft. Uh, they generally have an aluminum skin and of course the mast is aluminum and it's designed for it, it's not going to hurt the metal. And once all this is stripped, I'll apply the aircraft stripper and remove the coating on the mast. And I want to get down to bare metal and I want to polish it up so I can do a fine inspection, inspect for any cracks. These spars are from the donor boat that I purchased last fall. And so I want to start prepping these spars for use with my new 18 foot sailboat. You can see behind me here, uh, it's covered over. Uh, the hull is complete. It's just sitting on the strong back there for the winter. And as the weather improves, I'll be building a couple of gantries and setting up some chain falls so I can lift it up, remove the strong back, and turn it right side up. Then it's a matter of decking it over and uh, see if we can get this mast fitted in the other spars. So that's what I'm doing today. One of the first things I'm doing is uh, I'm removing this running rigging. And the reason for that is that, of course, it's just in the way. It's not going to help when I'm trying to take off all the other hardware. Let's see what we have to deal with. And this running rigging is old and it's worn and I'm not going to reuse it for that purpose. It's going to be, uh, it'll be renewed. And I'll save this, uh, this line anyway because I'll probably wind up making a couple of rope vendors with it. Here's a little bit of a challenge. Uh, this hardware may or may not be original. But even if it's not original, it's probably been on here for quite some time. Um, I'm kind of getting lucky with this particular cleat because I was able to break the screws free. And so I'm able to take this off. However, I have another problem with the other one. I do have a problem with this one here. Uh, this one here, it's very, very tight. I'm not even budging it. So, what I'm going to do, and I have to be very careful, this is aluminum. I'm going to try this torch. I'm just going to add a little bit of heat, but I have to be very careful about it. I don't want too much. I just want to shock the system a little bit. That's all I wanted to do. I don't want to get carried away. It's, uh, it's too easy to damage the part and damage the mast. I'm going to give it a wrap. And we'll see if that helps. 
The problem is when you have stainless steel fasteners going into aluminum uh, over a number of years, and this is 1975 vintage, it's a long time, and this may be original, and what happens is the, the dissimilar metals, they just kind of weld themselves together, makes it very difficult. Nope, that's not working. That's not working. So there's a couple other things I'm going to have to try, but if it doesn't work, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to drill that out. It's okay, it doesn't matter because I'm not going to reuse um, this section of the mast. This mast is going to have to get cut back a little bit to fit the new sailboat anyway, and all this hardware is going to go in a different location, but I want to, I want to use that cleat and I don't want to damage it. Let's see if I can get this off. Uh, this one's coming. It's not quite as bad. And the problem is some screws will come out easy and other ones will just give you fits. In this case, yeah, I can see the corrosion that just came out. In this case, if, uh, if I have a screw that doesn't want to come out, I can easily just grind it off with, a, uh, with my four and a half inch grinder with a cutting disc, I mean with a grinding disc on it. And uh, then I can get it off. This one's coming out okay. So I want to save all these pieces of hardware because they look like they're in fairly decent shape. They might be old, but they're not worn out. So I don't think this sailboat saw all that much use. I think it spent most of its life just sitting around doing nothing. It doesn't look like it spent a lot of time. I mean, it's been sailed. Obviously, it's been out in the water and it's been used. It just doesn't look like it was used very much. And the mast itself is in pretty decent shape, although they, they ran this power cord, and it's for a, for a running light, and there's no grommet. This is going to get, but it's going to get all new, new wiring anyway. <coughs> nope. <coughs> Got it. All right, a little bit of luck there. It's kind of a mishmash. This one here is Phillips head screws. This is not unusual practice. Many boat manufacturers use rivets to attach a lot of the hardware. These are the mounts for the uh, spreaders. And I'll probably use rivets myself when I reattach them. And they'll probably be located in a different point further up the mast. That's all there is to it. The way this light was on here, it's, uh, I'm pretty sure that's not a factory installation. I think somebody added this later, and it's kind of a, mainly because it's kind of a Rube Goldberg setup. I've never seen one done this way before. But, uh, that's alright. And what I'm going to do is, once this block is off here, I'm going to cut this wire. I'm not going to reuse this light, it's not an LED, it's uh, more of a conventional light. And I have all brand new LED lamps for my new boat, so um, I'm going to cut this cable and pull it through. Normally, if the light was going to go in the same place, I would attach a new cable, tape it to the end, help feed it through. But the new light isn't going to go here, it's going to go further up the mast. So it doesn't make any sense to keep this here. It's taken me the better part of an afternoon to get all the hardware and everything stripped off this mast, but I finally got every bit of it all the way down, even including that pesky cleat that was way down the bottom. 
and in a couple of cases I had to do a little bit of drilling and uh, but that's okay uh, everything was stubborn had a little little bit of tapping a little bit of heat a little bit of uh, liquid wrench but eventually I got it all out so I'm gonna go over it a little bit of uh, paint thinner clean off uh, some of the liquid wrench and whatnot and then when the weather warms up I'll go ahead and do the uh, the paint stripper. So now it's just uh, well, wash, rinse, repeat on the boom, and then the whisker pole. But it's I won't bother to film that because it's just uh, pretty much the same as what I was doing here on the mast. And when I get to the paint stripper, I'll I'll videotape that to show you that process. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do? With